I'm joined by Fide Master Camille Plichta, who's going to be talking about one of his favorite favorite openings, the Queen's Gambit. So, what is Queen's or, or what is the uh, opening roulette? The opening roulette is a new series of rapid arena tournaments for the community by the community. Um, and it's going to be on a different opening. So it's a thematic um, tournament uh, for a month. We're highlighting one particular opening and the starting position that you're going to get is in that opening. So Camille, maybe uh, we can put on the board what the uh, the thematic opening is. It's D4, D5, C4, the opening also known as the Queen's Gambit. Um, and uh, we've already got some uh, famous streamers in chat here. Ajela and Chess in the chat already going poggers. Um, nice to see some engagement there. And so, yeah, we're um, we're going to be um, starting with the tournament in about 10 minutes. Camille, what, uh, how you doing? Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you for, for joining. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, you know, there are three things in life I love doing. It's talking, it's chess, and it's eating. And now I have two of them. I mean, preferably it would be free, but I've eaten a nice lunch today, so I'm taking like two and a half. It's, it's nice. Uh, yeah, I'm doing great. Very nice. Uh, my daughter tomorrow has uh, grandfather's uh, day in, at her kindergarten, and her grandfather uh, took a train, came here to the city, and tomorrow is going to be, you know, a big party, and today is like relaxing, enjoying life, playing chess, commenting chess. Sounds good. Good life, good <laughs> life, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I You sent me a photo of your lunch right before this, which uh, uh, was... Uh, I, I guess a, a remake of uh, of a um, a dinner that we had uh, very recently when we went out in uh, to a, an Italian restaurant where you and I uh, had this wonderful uh, fennel salad that had um, was it mandarin or orange or something and then you decided I guess to recreate this uh, for your family and friends today so um, it looked very tasty. I mean, yeah, recreate is a good thing. It's like a remake. It's like I can watch. Uh... Mabediarov playing D4, and when I play D4, it's a little bit different. I think with the salad, it's uh, pretty much the same, but it wasn't bad. You know, people were eating this, and, you know, it was only a part of the lunch. It wasn't like the whole thing. It was just okay, an okay, good. appetizer. So, very nice, very nice. Yeah, it was uh, It was very good at the restaurant, and uh, the photo that you sent also looked very tasty. Um, and hopefully we're going to see some tasty chess today as well. Um, uh, it's nice to see chat filling up, and uh, the arena is not rated, Hakim. It is not rated. These are unrated games. Uh, so let's go into some a little bit more detail on what's going on. Uh, there are going to be prizes, though. So you have to have a minimum. You, you should you should have played a minimum of five games on Chess.com, and if you have, then you can join the arena still for the next ten minutes. And uh, once you have joined, and once the games are underway, you're going to be playing every game either from the black side or the white side in the Queen's Gambit. So after these three moves that uh, Camille has highlighted on the board, so D4 is already on the board by the time you start your game. D5 is already on the board by, start, by the time you start your game, and C4 as well. And then it's up to you. Are you going to play the Queen's Gambit accepted? Are you maybe going to try and uh, play something funky? Um, there's all sorts of different uh, possibilities there. Um, Camille, what are what would you what is your recommendation after you you've gone d4 d5 c4 what would you play what's your with, what's your with, favorite with, you mean you mean with black or black for black I would I would ask for a tayback personally because you know I played the king's indian all, all my life <laughs> uh, uh, quite <laughs> honest quite honestly like with 100% honesty uh, yeah. I'm going to now try to find a way to flip the board, which I'm pretty sure is somewhere there, but okay, I can't. Okay, never mind. Uh, so basically, what I'm testing lately in Blitz games is that after d4, d5, c4, I play e5, so the, the Albin counter gambit. And, uh -huh. uh, and when they take it, I don't play d4, which is played in like 98% of games, but I play 97, which is quite interesting. There was okay. there was a few years ago there was a bullet match between Magnus Carlsen and Andrew Tank and Magnus was playing this not this line some a few times he got excellent positions and I was like yeah let's stay let's just try it and people with white misplay it a lot uh, interesting but but yeah uh, 
just to give you an advice, like here after D4, D5, C4, there are basically three moves that are uh, main moves and are worth considering. Uh, there is the Slav defense with C6. I'm going to mark it red. Um, there is the Queen's Gambit declined or just, you know, it's not really the Queen's Gambit declined yet, but when you play Knight F6 on the next move is going to be the Queen's Gambit declined. Uh, while there is also D takes C4, which is the Queen's Gambit accepted. And those are the three main ways of uh, playing for black. Everything for else those is of us, Yeah. For those, for those of us who are not so great at visualizing these moves, is it possible for you to make these moves or can we not make them yet? Not yet. I would have not to yet. join the tournament or something like that. And I just don't want to mess up anything because I know okay. how it's going to end. Uh, I try to flip the board. I, I can't do it at the moment. So... Uh, I think it's game. it's best to wait for people to start their games because yeah, I I sure. know I know my talent in spoiling uh, technical things and we don't want to do this. You have a great talent for spoiling things. Yes. Technically, yes. Technically. Technically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I know. Um. If if there are any uh, questions uh, in chat, either to me or to Gert, by the way, for those of you who don't, don't know this, Gert is the person that hired me. He's a CEO of Chessable. I mean, <laughs> technically, you are not really my boss because I'm not like an employer, but you, you can just tell me what to do. So like, yeah, you are you my boss or not? Like technique, how does I don't know work? you 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 have made this joke very often that I am I'm like the boss and I I tell you what to do, but really yeah. it's the other way. I feel I'm I'm more of like kind of your coach. You kind yeah. of say what you want to do, and then I'm just kind of standing on the sideline cheering, going, "Yeah, go for it." Yeah, so, you are all, you are also like when I ask you about can I say this, can I say this, can I say this, you say this you can say, this will think about this you cannot say, <laughs> this is also your <laughs> job, right? So. Uh, we let's just say that when you first uh, uh, were working on your debut chessable course and you started to engage in the forums, uh, you were a diamond in the rough, and uh, you have come a long way in uh, engaging with the audience in a way that uh, you know they feel like they can engage back with you. You were this, you know, feisty personality, and uh, you've managed to channel that into your chess openings, and you're bringing a lot of humor and fun to uh, to your courses now. So it's great. Yeah, but you know, there is that you have to draw the line somewhere, and you know, I have tendency of crossing it some sometimes. Hey, it's uh, it it uh, it's all good and fun. I think most people understand your uh, your your you have a heart of gold and uh, a quick tongue, and uh, you can get away with a lot of stuff. Thank you. So, uh, no worries. The question on chat is: the Slav better or the Queen's Gambit declined? Uh, well, depends on what type of your position you want. Because the thing is that this question can never be answered unless we get more information about you. If you say that you are a player who really wants the initiative at all costs, who's not afraid to play some gambit, who just wants to be attacking, then the answer is that none of those openings is going to be good for you. On the other hand, if you are like, I don't want gambits, I just want full equality, I want like no fireworks, uh, calm, solid positions, just let me equalize, get a draw with black, then probably the answer is going to be the Queen's Gambit declined. Well, if you are something in between, then I assume the slap is going to be an answer. So it really depends. Depends on what type of chess you want to play, what player are you, what kind of structures you're fine playing. Uh, are you, for example, afraid of exchange slap, which for many people is like, like a nightmare uh, with both colors? Mm. There's no one answer, no one line answer to that. Three minutes to join the tournament. Uh, there are currently 165 players in. And uh, you, you told you told us, Gertz, that there are prizes. What kind of prizes? Yeah. Okay, so we have a few different prizes. Um, winners will be calculated by taking into account your top six scores out of all eight arenas. So uh, this month we haven't started to uh, at the start of the month yet, but the, there will be multiple arenas. So that today there's an early and a late arena. 
And uh, there will be again next uh, week as well. And after that, we're going to take a look at your top six scores out of all those games. Um, and uh, then the prizes are handed out on a monthly basis and on a weekly basis. So on a monthly basis, if you finish first, uh, you get $100 Chessable credit and a coaching session with a Chessable author or expert. And who is the Chessable author or expert this month, Camille? That's a very good question, Gert. Who is it? You. Is you? Um, Me, right? Yeah? It's you. Okay. Uh, the second place is a $50 Chessable credit and a coaching session with a Chessable author and expert. And who do you think that Chessable author and expert is, Camille? I have absolutely no idea. You. And, so, and then the third place is a Chessable credit of $20. Fourth place and fifth place get a three-month diamond membership, and the top place streamer wins 10 Twitch gift subscriptions. So that's the monthly prizes. We also have monthly prizes for under 1500 which are the same as I just mentioned for the uh, monthly prizes above 1500 And then we also have weekly prizes. So if you do well and you finish first, you get a three-month diamond membership. You finish second, you get a one-month diamond membership. You get finish third, you get a one-month diamond membership. So if people really want to win a lesson with you, Camille, then they're um, going to have to finish in that monthly monthly top top five and, uh, you know, hopefully in top three. You, and uh, you, otherwise they get other stuff. You know, since I'm not really technically giving like one-on-one -on -one lessons at the moment, then this is, uh, you know, something to fight for. Like we don't even have to have chess lessons. I can teach you some cooking, strawberry pasta expert here. Well, yeah, the, the strawberry pasta conversation, I think we're going to avoid that one for this broadcast because I don't, I don't, we don't want to shock people with, with this, this strange Polish culinary dish of uh, having pasta with cream sauce and strawberries in it. And um, don't forget cottage but, uh, cheese. Okay, let's go to chess. 10 cheese. seconds. 10 seconds. I'm excited. I really am. Let's see this chess. Camille, why did we invite you to the stream? Because you told me that I'm the expert on Queen's Gambit. And here we are going to have a chance to hopefully see it. Uh, we will start maybe from the top game. How do you think? Like, we don't oh, We have a Queen's Gambit declined on the board. Yes, yes, yes. So e6. Now the question is can I make moves? Yes, I can make moves. Uh huh. It's incorrect. Okay, so this is like my guess. Unfortunately, my guess was incorrect. A3 plate. This is already something that uh, I do not know. I know that this move exists. And its idea is to basically play knight c3 without allowing bishop b4. However, this bishop b4 line is more played in the Nimzu Indian when like uh, there is no pawn on d5, but there is a knight on f6. That's a big change. Here with a3, I think that if there is a good moment for white, to, uh, for black to take on c4, it's probably now. Like after a3, let's assume you take now. Then it should be a better version because this pawn on a3 doesn't do much. Like if black ever plays b5 later, then a4 wastes the tempo. Maybe this was a good idea. Black played knight f6, knight c3, bishop e7, knight f3 castles. Those are like the five moves that black can play almost automatically in this opening. It's like you get your king into safety, you develop your bishop, develop your knight, no weaknesses. And the only problem that black has in those uh, positions is usually this uh, this bishop here on uh, c8. Okay, it's like wow, in the French, white right? Is going, white Where is, is it? going for it. Way. Yeah. Let's go. H4. Harry. Harry is, pu Harry is pushed. This so, is uh, uh, some interesting chess already on the board here in the in the clash between the two top rated players. Yes. H4. This is a this is a Camille Plichta type move, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. I would prefer to have my center a little bit more solid or the structure to to be set because now black immediately should counterattack with c5. I wouldn't even think twice about it. It's like there is this okay. basic rule. When somebody attacks you on the on the wing, you should counterattack in the center. And Hakim is listening or he just knows what he's doing. And this one, uh, this opening up of the center should be in Black's favor. I would even go further and probably not even recapture this pawn. I would throw more pieces into the action. I would play knight c6, prepare to play d4, then prepare to play e5, e4, try to do something in the center. 
because the, even if if I lose a pawn in the process, then lines are going to to get opened. Mm -hmm. However, black took, white takes on d5. I assume black is going to re to recapture this with the pawn. And this is going to be a very sharp position. White will try to do something on the king side, but it's really hard to imagine that with just I'm, this h pawn, it's going I'm to be I'm already possible. sweating. Like, how is white going to castle out of the center here? This is oh, going to be scary. I assume he didn't even think about castling when he played h4. Yeah. You no, know, maybe what can I do? What can I do with white? Like, I will play e3. I will move the bishop and put my king on f1. I will leave my rook here because h5, h6 potential. I don't know. Looks good for like this. Both looks sides. looks like an interesting game already. Uh, hey, and Ma you were talking Mamadiarish, Mamadiarovish game, I would say. Oh, yeah, you Mamadiarov were plays earlier. D4 and H4 later. Okay, you yeah. were talking earlier about uh, you suggested to play um, the Albin counter gambit because that's an opening that you have been. Um, Messing around with yourself in your in your online games, which yeah. the Alban counter gambit uh, arises after d4, d5, and then c4 countered by e5. So then we have two, you know, four pawns in the center, uh, which is interesting. Uh, um, and it wasn't it recently played in a top level game? I believe it was, but I don't remember the game. Do you remember? Yeah, Erwin. Erwin was playing it with Black, I think. Uh, with white, Erwin Lamy, that's Erwin right. Erwin was playing with white against somebody, or with black. Yeah, he played black, I think. Yeah, this was some Tata Steel game from like a week ago. Yeah, you're right. I'm not like following very closely because you will not believe it. One week ago, I was pretty busy, uh, but yeah, uh, it popped up that this game happened. You're right. But uh, this version of the Albin is not what I was talking about. This was a little bit different. Should we switch to, the, to another game? Like, let's see what's happening quickly. Yeah, yeah. I'm allowed to. I, I'm allowed to switch. You're the boss. You're the boss. Okay. Boss. Here we have the Slav. So, the main line, and here black plays a6, the so-called Chebanenko variation. And a6 is a pretty interesting move because uh, it's really some sort of a waiting move, like. Oh, the game ended. I wanted to discuss it, and uh, I, okay, I will just go, go go back to it. So, by playing a6, black doesn't really show their hand. Black might play b5 next. Uh, black might play bishop f5. Black might play bishop g4. Black might still play d6 sometimes. E6 sometimes. G6. It's a very very flexible idea. And trust me or not, if something like this happens, let's say this is going to be the position like e3, bishop g4 takes takes takes. Uh, Okay, this is not what I want to show. Like, he, let's let's assume something like this. When I play queen b3, another idea behind the move a6 is that sometimes you can cover this pawn by playing this bizarre looking rook a7, which is in fact not that bad because at some point black is going to play like knight b to d7, queen c7, and can move uh, the rook back. How the game ended? Because it ended in like 12 moves. Let's see. So white play bishop g5 which is already a little bit non-standard in this situation because I think now dc should be interesting. Having the pawn on a6, when you play b5, you have more protection to the pawns. Black played g6. It was taken. e3. And uh, yeah, there was there, there has to be some sort of a blunder here. Because the position is pretty normal here. Like queen d7 takes, takes. Knight a4, okay. He wants to play knight b6, obviously. Rook a7, as mentioned. Yeah, so black is using, the, using his strategy. That in many, many positions you are able to play this move rook a7. That's the that's the idea. So knight b6, queen c7, and yeah, there, I, I'm pretty sure I know what the blunder is going to be. Like queen a5 here. Yeah. I think he assumed that he can play knight c3. But if you do this, then you lose your queen. So he uh, loses a full piece here. Like the knight is under attack, the king is under attack, and he loses a piece. That's why white resigned. Ouch. Quickie. Yeah, this happens. Those things happen. Uh, this was a rapid rapid game between what was the level of the players? Quite 2300, 2300 around. So there you go. Even opening tricks, openings matter. And if people miss their, if people are not familiar with the regular opening patterns or the, the little tricks, it looks like black knew the opening a little bit better than white. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. By playing Rook A7, he shows that definitely. Yeah, uh, pl there the plans are there. 
There's a nice course on the Chebanenko Slav by uh, Grandmaster Alex Solovich. Alex yeah. On Chessable. And uh, we have a free version of that course available as well. So people can go check it out. Um, this wasn't one of the four recommended courses, but uh, Alex did a great course. And in fact, we did a really cool video shoot with him for that particular course. We took him to an old fortress town because when we asked Alex, how would you describe the Chebanenko Slav? He told us that um, the Chebanenko Slav is like setting up your own fortress with black and asking white, what are you going to do to break down my fortress? And I think uh, in this game, White tried to break it down too fast, and Black just uh, came out and uh, punished uh, uh, the uh, opening play. And you uh, explained already that that bizarre-looking uh, Rook a, uh, A7 move. So uh, so that was nice, very very instructive. Um, yeah. Let's go to another game. Yeah. So uh, here we have a person. Uh, I'm already very confused because the name is Vichy Prague, and there is Rashid Nedmedjinov on uh, on the picture. So it's like three different players and the four of guys playing here. So it's like, you know, cooperation, maybe. Maybe Vichy Prague is just trying to channel the best of both. And yeah. uh, using, using the name as uh, as his, uh, you know, his, his, his mascot. Yeah. And Rashid Nedmedjinov was one of those crazy players, like Tao, Tao style. Yeah. Okay. So what do, we, what do we have here? This is a very responsible decision with C5. It's like white got all the minor pieces on perfect squares, I would say. It's like tough to imagine this bishop standing better than it stands on D3. This bishop standing better than it's on G5 and knight's obviously here. So black is doing something here in the center. However, by playing C5, this is a very responsible decision because all the time black has to ponder the consequences. And pardon me, it's jumped for some reason. Uh, black has to ponder. I can't make a move, unfortunately, so I'll make arrows. Sorry for that. So if you take here on c5, this pawn on, D, on, uh, on d5 is always going to be isolated. And playing with an isolated pawn has consequences. It's like if you exchange two or three, my, three pair of minor pieces, then this pawn is going to be weak. In end games, you have to be careful. So the side with the isolated pawn should keep as many minor pieces on the board as possible. The side who is playing against this pawn has like two main strategies, either to restrict this pawn and exchange as many minor pieces as possible, or simply to attack this pawn in so many ways that it's just going to collapse. Uh, in the game, black played uh, white played 95. And uh, here it's interesting because now both sides have an isolated pawn, one on d4, one on d5. But obviously, white pieces are more active. Mm. And I think it's a little bit non-easy for black here. Like, you go h6, I simply go bishop h4, as played in the game, rook e8, and f4. This is a typical idea in those structures. You just want to cement your knight on e5. And now, if black ever takes on e5, you just gladly recapture with the f pawn. So knight f8. This is also a typical move for the Queen's Gambit uh, positions. The knight is going to control some of those squares here, making some options to develop the bishop. The bishop is now free to move. So queen f3. And after like queen f3, rook a to e1, white is just in full attack mode. All pieces in the can game. We, um, yeah. Can we fast forward to the position uh, that it is now? Because it looks like yeah. uh, the yeah. uh, black yeah. player is in heavy time trouble already and white is... Um, Still yeah, because with the, all, all those moves like, that white played were so natural. It's like you don't even think about those moves. You just make them naturally. Like black has uh, half a minute. White has eight minutes here. And uh, knight yeah, of seven. Look at that wow. strange queen. Knight of seven. If it works, it's nice. Like I assume that if you take this, there is some queen h5 idea. And black decided not to take it. Maybe this is even... Nah, this can't be correct. You should take the knight, no matter what happens. Because now it's like suffering for free. And this is very nice. Maybe this is really Rashid Nedjbeddin of playing. Or maybe this is Vichy. There's definitely some caveman tactics happening right now. Okay, the queen's starting to creep in. And now you Check push the pawn that. forward, forward. Now f7 is a threat. If you take it, h7 collapses. So if he goes queen f7, bishop g6, queen f8. And okay, you can even take this. Okay. If knight takes, then you take the rook, and then you play f7, winning material. So he takes with the rook. 
But yeah, this cannot be right. F7 should be played. Because after this, king takes. He missed this. Yeah, black is escaping a little bit here, but not well, enough time. Game ended. Game ended. Yeah. So we know how it ended, but that was a uh, more more of a, a flag than a. But now we rock. can see that it's actually the, the opposite. Black has had a lot of time, and white didn't. That this, this might might have been some so, some sort of glitch. But now the bishop is kind of trapped because if you move it, there is rook c8. So like bishop c6, you have rook c8, you take on h8 and you promote. So he resigned here. Mm. And no one can blame him. This is easily winning. Like after this, you can simply like play rook c2, e7, king g3. For example, like rook a7 next, and you are a pawn up. You have two connected fast pawns, easily winning. Yeah. Mm. Okay, we have some game here uh, played between Raini from Netherlands. Yeah, Netherlands, right? Yes. And unrated yeah. GM from uh, with Ukraine flag, but from Bangladesh. Okay. Uh, black is much, much better. Like two extra pawns. Um, this pawn on A3 is going to be a hero of the game. Like imagine the knight getting here. It's basically game over. Uh, I, when I play the King's Indian with black, and I have this bishop on g7. Whenever I get this pawn to a3, like no matter what happens, it's always good. Even if you lose this pawn, white usually needs to spend like two, three moves to capture it. In the process, you can do something. But this, this is just technically winning. Uh, there is a uh, game by Shefru. I think she's a streamer from Hungary, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she is a little bit of material down, but she is attacking. Let's see how it goes Christina. quickly. So this was a Slav. Okay, this is a typical reaction. You take on d5 uh, when b6 is not the best move. And uh, yeah, I like what white is doing so far. Uh, here something probably went wrong because her position... Uh, normally you take with the bishop because now the bishop is a yeah, little what... bit unhappy. Yeah, that's an unhappy bishop staring at its own pawn. So knight e4. Okay. Yeah, bishop b1 is typical. Next you maybe queen h5 ideas. Okay, it's possible to take... Queen g4. Okay, but maybe now we want to. Yeah, play but but uh, this is a bit problematic. Like I would like to play. Well, again, I'm I I'm reminded not to make moves. Uh, because when I make a move, it's just uh, this guess a move on chess.com. Like when there is a live game, you make a move on the board, you are participating in the guess the move contest. Like rook c7 here, I would like to play, but then queen e1, queen e1 mate, unfortunately. Yeah. So she she just lost a pawn here. And she tries to attack. F3. A bit risky opening up the bishop for from black. Oh, well, we bishop a6 is nice. By the way, Igor is from Poland. Now I noticed. So king f1. Yeah, a lot of material. No, yeah, this is a nice move. You can't stay on person. Like it's a very nice thing to do, but unfortunately, your queen is going to be dropped. So bishop h6. Fe, bishop g5, bishop e7. White is a full exchange down. It's going to be very tough to come back from this. But still, still, this is this she's is still fighting. a game. Does she have a perpetual here? She's she's looking to get one. Yeah, yeah. I think she's threatening a perpetual. Like if you buy play queen d8, you go back, then you play queen g4. There's no way to avoid it. Because ideally, right. you, you ideally you would like to cover this check with some queen h7, but it's impossible. There's no way black can get the king to h8 when I'm going to be checking on d8 and h4. Okay, so now there's no yeah, potential. If, yes, because the king goes to g6 and also queen g5 is, a, is threatened. So she plays a 4 Nicely done. Now I think e4 is a threat. Yes, because then we have a check. No, not because, a checkmate, but again. Yeah, uh, no. then you play queen g5, queen h4, and you have this sort of perpetual. Uh, yeah. Here, I think to prolong the game, you have to play queen d8, no matter what happens. Because if you exchange queens, white is just technically lost. With two two versus one on the queen side, this just cannot be saved. So queen and d8 she has does to it, she plays it. Yeah. Trushina is a strong player. Sorry? Trushina is a strong player, Sefru. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now the question is, what does what is black doing in this position? Maybe king f5 you go? Because, like, if you play here, king Oof. is pretty safe. Pretty safe. You threaten some queen g4 oh. ideas. Right. 
Now the question is, oh, now I can't play e4 because then the pawn on f4 would be hanging. So she takes you on b6. You would have wanted to play e4. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now maybe just go h3 to, to cover the square on g4. The other thing is yep. that maybe this doesn't threaten much. So I have time to play some queen d8. This is maybe a practically a decent approach with queen takes a5, but I would be a little bit scared to take to take this pawn. Can she because just now, go to b4 and protect the pawn again? Yeah, probably. The thing is that the queen is a little bit uh, far from action. Like if you play queen d2, then you take on f4. Like I will make arrows. Like let's let me once in my life feel like I'm Hikaru. Uh, so queen d2, you take, you take. There's queen g4, unfortunately. After queen g4, I have to move here, rook f4, and okay, now black crashes through. The question is, what else do you do in this position then? I think this is a big, big problem. Like maybe this, but yeah, then I but start with queen g4. Igor. Igor's in time trouble. Okay. Oh yeah, because Igor. there is no increment, right? No increment, no. Yes, this is very Ooh. nicely done. I thought about it and this is probably the only way to kind of prolong the game. But unfortunately, I think it might not be enough. Because now queen Can g2 followed around? by queen e2 is some threat. Yeah. And then the dead yeah. pawn queens. It's like this is not going to be made because I have the square on d4. Like I can escape. But unfortunately, uh, the death pawn is too strong. Now on the other hand, you know. Yeah, yeah. I was in looking positions this like this, magic can happen from time to time. White, queen g3 mate, oh, mate that's... in one. There's mate in one. There's mate in one. Oh no, she takes a Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like if you don't see it in the first second, you'll probably not notice it in the next 10 seconds if you spend on it. You, you, you either see it or you don't. And, yeah. and once again, oh, queen g3 mate. Oh, mate. Once on, again. Let's go. One once more. Once again. Yeah. And amazingly, uh, the, the black queens are the ones that are helping. But okay, let's yeah. say, let's say that she trades and plays e6. How easy it is to win having 16 seconds? Because if you ask me, I think white is going to win this. White is probably going to win this game. Like you play bishop c7 now, I guess. And then you just try to play like king c5, king d6. King c5, king d6, do this. Get your king to d6 and play e6, e7. Like, it's really not easy to win this with this time. It's like you have to do something. Like, you go king d7, king d8. This is wild. Now, uh, I think black now really has to find queen g5 not to lose on the spot. Exactly. But he has five seconds. Okay. So now we do. Uh, now yeah. you, now you, can, like... you can promote. Now, oh. now she's winning on the board as well. Like, queen c8. Yeah. Beautiful. You see, that's why Queen's Gambit is such a great opening. You can get a position One like this, you are second. still winning. One second. One it second. Was, it came down to the time scramble in this one. That was an exciting game to watch. Some, some, you know, that was a mess in the end. But uh, the time scramble was exciting to watch. Let's go to the next game. There are, are there any? Okay, this is finished. Uh, one second. Uh, what's the current status of the uh where where how, how what are the standings can you click on standings Let's yes see yes yes quick. okay because this is oh, okay uh, okay i i i i i made i messed up a little bit i thought it's a swiss tournament no it's arena yeah yeah i know mm. i know i have i don't remember when was the last time i played in a swiss tournament uh what do we do okay let's see this game mm, this is the english opening how is the okay? So this is the Tarash, the Tarash variation. Jordan van Forest has a course on the Tarash on chessable. Yes, he does. Uh, and we, you we don't... also have yeah, yeah, go on. We also have a, a, a pretty cool mini small course called the on chessable called the um the Dubov Tarash. Yes, which is by Erwin Lamy. By Erwin Lamy, yeah. Yeah. By a great what? guy. Very great guy. Okay, so here Looks is like black interesting position. Like white has no queen, but on the other hand, white has a knight, a rook, and those two pawns. I would prefer white all day long here. Really? Yeah, because you know the thing is the queen is better in positions when your opponent has weaknesses. Now point point like squares in white's camp which are weak. 
Uh, e2, maybe is a bit weak. Yeah, but how can you attack it? Yeah, right now, all those pieces are on the back rank, right? So like, uh, Black just, is going to have to do... Yeah. Like, worst case scenario, I play this. I defend the pawn. Like, let's say I even lose this pawn. How bad it is when I play, like, rookie one and rookie seven is going to be for it. White has a clear-cut plan of playing, like, b4, a4, b5, and so on. Yes. So a4, uh, uh, this I would not do. I would play rook, rook to e1. Even though position is objectively around balanced, I think after rook e1 is way easier to play for white. Yeah, you want to keep your pieces. But this I would not do. Uh, d3 is probably pretty strong. Like, not only defending the bishop, but more importantly, threatening d2. Yeah, but um, uh, the white player has a lot of time on the clock. Black has less than 20 seconds left. Yeah, but Although... that's, the, that's the lifetime. So let me quickly get to the position that's currently on the board. Still, I would okay. take white here. Rook Very c5? Fast. Rook c5? Like, one of the rooks got here. The pawn is lost. Queen d2. Yeah. Still, I would take white. And even in this position, I would still take white. Uh, that's some bias, you know. Probably. But I prefer to have a lot of material for the queen. Rook d6, okay. I guess. Knight Rook d6 is ex should be extremely strong here. But yeah, then the knight is hanging, so maybe not. Maybe not yet. It's like you go knight f4, exactly. Knight g6? Yeah. Knight g6, game over. Like, you go here. There is no way to stop rook h8, right? He missed this. But he's going to yeah, win on time. Interesting yeah. to see that a lot of players miss these basic checkmate patterns. Maybe we should start uh, promoting the checkmate patterns manual on Chessable. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Like, just go knight g6, sir. Yeah. Let's go. There we it's go. Like, nice. It's well like it, it's like maybe this is Look something something nice to introduce. Like uh, when you miss five mates in one game, your game crashes. Ah, yeah, yeah, exactly. But here, okay. uh, look at the time for both. They were down to less than a second each. Yeah. Okay. Here, it really is coming down to the wire every game. Here, I think the game is going to be ending pretty quickly. What do we yeah. have here? Here, we have some interesting position when I think that this bishop... Oh, okay, it looked trapped. Yeah, the, it, the bishop is trapped, in fact. It can be taken. There, there is a trick that black can take now here. But there's queen f7 with mate. If you go to h7, queen h5 is mate. If you go to h8, queen g8 is mate. Queen h5 is mate in one. Yes. You see, people from Poland, they know their checkmate patterns. They study crafty roughs scores on chessable. They know what they are doing. No embarrassment, my friend. Very nicely done, Machi. One, two, three, eight. I'm a fan. You're not slightly biased at all here. Absolutely not. Why no. would I? And you just happened to find another game with another Polish player. Total coincidence. I mean, okay. Let me let me find let me find find somebody from Netherlands. Uh, unfortunately, let's not, I let's not repeat the words that you taught me the other day in, in Polish. No, 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 no. Uh, the problem is that I try to find somebody from Netherlands, but unfortunately, from the top standings, I cannot. See... Oh, there is somebody here. There is somebody here. Uh, so we have a game uh, where white tries to attack on the king side, but unfortunately, there is not enough pieces to, to, to crash through, I think. It's like white is two pawns down. Like when you try to attack on one wing and you forget about the center, forget about the queen side, let me quickly show you what happened and maybe let's try to find some mistakes. Like bishop d3 is already a little bit strange. It's like normally when somebody plays c5, it's decision. Do you take on d5? Do you take on c5? If you play bishop d3, it gives black the chance to play like DC, dc4 and cd4 pretty, pretty quickly. But yeah, he plays in a very, very nice typical way of this opening. And now knight before, why not? Yeah, I like that move. Yeah. Bishop e2 should be played. The bishop should be preserved. In open positions, bishops are priceless. So knight e5, I don't like it because now black has two bishops. Those bishops might not look like a big deal at the moment, but in a few moves, it can change. Like you go rook e1, okay. b6, it's b6. It's starting to look a little bit, but if the bishop wasn't on h4, it would look like something that could have come out of um, a Kolezukotort type uh, 
pawn yeah. structure where, where white has these two hanging pawns and c4 and d4 uh, and d4 although of course black still yeah but like white has an easy plan here rook c1 and there's a bunch of other even the bishop can drop back to g3 threaten the queen i like white yeah exactly i think in this position there is even a small tactic here it's not nothing really like very very difficult it's like you ex you take and again i did it <laughs> you know i just want to play chess i just want to make a move just let me play one move uh okay you take here yeah if you take with the pawn then your structure is a little bit uh eh. You probably don't want it. But if you take with the bishop, then after CD, your pawn on d5 is lost. Is there an option to go into analysis mode when you're here? If you click on the wheel, maybe? What wheel? This one? No, no there's a little tiny wheel next to the clock. This one? Yeah. Flipboard. I, so. no. I, I, will, I will spoil something. I will spoil something. Let's let's yeah. do it in the way that is done. Maybe maybe chat is not going to kill me. By the what, way, what is am I, what happens? Wait, wait, Camille. What happens yeah. if you click instead of evaluation? What happens if you click on Explorer? Explorer where here? Yeah. And can I make a move? <laughs> Looks like you can make a move. Huh? Let's go. By the way, am I seeing it wrong, or there are, are there thirty seven hundred people watching? There are 3,700 people watching. That's almost as many people as my city has habitants, my friend. Yeah, I know. You live in a beautiful small town on the coast of Poland. And yes. we recently visited you there. And we filmed some really cool content with you. And it yeah. was absolutely wild, crazy, cold Polish weather with snow and storm and whatever. And um, what people in chat probably don't know is, but you live right next to an old Soviet air base. And... Um, I mean, that it was... wasn't technically Soviet, but yeah, it was kind of Polish communist. Eastern German. Like... Yeah, East... it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the that. Eastern yeah. Germany yeah. was Soviet, yeah? So we can yeah. say Soviet. Soviet yeah, yeah. sounds cooler. Yeah. Soviet okay. sounds cooler. It's more intriguing. So so you live next to this old Soviet um, airbase, and you basically just drove us around this empty, abandoned uh, airport. Um, yeah, with all these we, we, had, we had a few second thoughts if, if we can even drive there. There was so much rain, right? There was a lot of rain. There's a lot of snow. Uh, it was uh, it was pretty wild weather. What, what surprised me the most is when we went to the uh, the uh, your the 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 coast, and there was like I don't know some insane amount of wind and storm happening, and and just these old senior couples were just walking around like it was the best weather. <laughs> And everybody's just in fine coats. You know, once I I saw the scene that there is this pier in Co-Object where I live, and there are people there, like there is there are so high waves that you cannot even see the pier. But there is this family of four going to the pier and saying, We paid to go to the pier, we came here. You bet you 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 better know that we go to the pier. <laughs> They're going to get their value out of the pier. Okay, let's yes. get back to the chest here. There's some stuff happening. Lots of trades. Um, okay, now black. Two down. That's that's what happens when you like when your attack backfires. Yeah. Uh, I will maybe stop for the moment and, and say why it backfired for white. I think because the center is opened. When there's the center is opened. When there's a lot of dynamism in the center, and when then you try to attack on the wing. You really need to be careful because something like this might happen. And when your center is under pressure, then attacking the king really can be dubious at times. It's like when the center is stable, when it's closed, the chance of attacking is bigger. But now see what happened. Like you play three natural moves. You get the knight here, threaten some stuff. Black simply, simply parries this. Now the rook has to move and then you take. And yeah, you try to attack here, but then your center is disappearing. And after this precise like few moves, black is two pawns up. I think black is going to win this. Yeah, black looks a lot better, stable, safer king. Although black's not uh, afraid of pushing more pawns. So there's definitely some opening of lines here now. Yeah. But that rook on f3 looks horrible. Yeah, it's it's like that's why you know when I was young, beautiful, uh, I was attacking a lot, 
<laughs> but nowadays I'm like, yeah, why do, why do you even bother? Like, let's play some ground chess, you know, sometimes. Uh, hey, sometimes you got to chill a little bit. Of course. It's like attacking in nine games in one tournament. One tournament takes energy. Uh, How are these standings is... uh, developing currently? Where are we going with this? Yeah. Uh, there is a high-level game here by Mr. Renato. I'm going to murder this pronunciation. By Renato Terry Luan, I think it's uh, the guy from Peru. Uh, he's streaming, by the way. So he's taking out our viewers. Awesome. Do we like him? Yeah, we like him. But he's taking he's... away our viewers if he's streaming. Oh, know? we're not worried about him taking away viewers. We're 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 happy that he's participating in our community event. That's amazing. I'm joking, of course. Big shout out um... to Mr. Renato, and he won. He won. He won pretty quickly. White resigned, and why White resigned? Why? Because there are like three extra pawns. No attack on the king. Not even a way to give one check without losing a queen. So. Uh, I was promised I can jump as much as I want, so I'm going to look for some big ratings. Uh, there is 2200, but there is a Polish flag. Uh, now somebody will complain, but uh, let's, let's go. Uh, so no there is Slav. There is Slav. E6, the semi mm -hmm. Slav, bishop g5. This is exactly what I recommend in my chessable course. By base, basically, you can get a free version of that course. There's short and sweet, plicht as Queen's Gambit, if you see my library of courses, absolutely free. Over 30 minutes of me talking, if you don't have me enough for today, well, in like one half hour stream, I'm pretty sure it's going to be ending. And then make sure that you still can spend some like 30 minutes of quality time with chess, with me, with some attacking variations. Uh, the Moscow variation here, don't like this, line, this name, but Bishop H4, the anti-Moscow Gambit. One of my favorites. Uh, you sacrifice the now, pawn, basically. Yeah, so it, now the idea is d5, knight takes, bishop takes to renew the pin, correct? Uh, here, here the idea is that uh, for white or for black? For black. Black plays yeah. g5, and then yeah. uh, not, uh, white white takes with the knight. Oh, you, you have to go into explorer. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. I'm learning. You can do this. I think in this specific move order, it is a little bit inaccurate because white can play a e3. It's like normally you, you want to play gonna... e4, but the thing is that if you play e3, you still want to take this. And I'm going but to claim you weakened a little bit. I, I think this is the order to do it. Yeah. Because now you forced e4. Oh, like I if I, if I play e3 the... here, you don't have to play g5. That's the point. You don't have to play g5. You can play b5 immediately. And I all I always you know had also problems. I confused those orders, but like half a year ago, I learned finally what what to play where. But yeah, in in general, the idea is that obviously you just want to play g5 and you want to play b5. A very risky way of playing. I wouldn't recommend it uh, unless you are like heavily prepared. But yeah, the opponent opponent's opponent. People with black are claiming like yeah, I have an extra pawn. Try to take it from me. White is going. I to always play found it really frustrating opening to play against with white which is th this was one of those variations that made me stop playing d4 and go straight for 1b3 okay sad story i never shared it yeah well there you go revelations here on the community stream talking about openings yeah. um so basically what white uh, what i'm recommending to do in this position nowadays is you simply want to castle and you simply want to play 95 next just get the pieces yeah. of the game then try to break with a4, try to break with f4, try to play a queen c1, queen c2, rook d1. Get all, all of the guys into the action and just break through. Uh, but yeah, black didn't feel like it. He played knight b to d7. So this is like the typical way of playing the slav. When you just want to avoid all sort of confrontations, you just develop your pieces in the most natural way. Uh, bishop b4 I slightly dislike. I think the bishop belongs on e7, sometimes on d6, on b4. Okay, it stands here, but... Okay, when I play a3 in the future, what do you do? You take and you give me your bishop or you just retreat and I will have uh, free, a free a3 free played. So rook c1, and, um, knight d2. Yeah? Uh, let, can we get out of explore and uh, go back to uh, how the game is developing? Very curious to see what yeah. moves are being okay. Yeah, this looks so very Cambridge Springs-like. Uh, yeah, black takes all of the pawns. 
and white yeah. is just going to have huge initiative. Like what kind of initiative? The queen is almost. Well, where's trapped. the queen going? To a two. Queen's going a two. Yeah. Does she remain trapped? Uh, it's not trapped yet because you have no way to trap it. But white is going to have a huge initiative. There are going to be threats to the queen there for sure. Like imagine you yeah. play queen e two, then you play rook b one, rook a one, rook b one. The queen is going to be trapped. Like. Can I like play b6 point. and then the oh yeah okay the queen is already dropping back now. Yeah, there if you go. play b6 then the queen really has no way back home. And I think now it's really time for white to push e4. It's time to do it. Yeah. Well, white exactly. there we go. Yeah. Uh, this rook here looks like it's a little bit misplaced. Like who places the rook on d3? Go. But yeah, in the future there goes we go. right. Goes right. That's exactly the case. Like you want your rook here. In many, many cases, like white is two pawns down. This is not like a, some kind of position where they will play like two, three moves. We will say, yeah, equality. It's never equality. It's like it can be imbalanced, but it's never equality here. This is your kind of chess, isn't it? This kind of stuff, white being two pawns down, but having all the initiative and charging ahead. Yeah, it, it also depends of, on who I'm playing against. If I'm facing somebody who is like four or five hundred rated below me, then I'm not going to go into that. Because if I make like one mistake, I can just get a position where I'm going to be two pawns down, right? Interesting. But, but so, when, I'm, so when, I, play... when I'm playing somebody who is like close rated to me or higher rated, then there's much bigger chance I'm going, chance I'm going to go for this. Okay, wait. So let's, let's stop for, for a sec there. So you're yeah. saying that you play sharper chess against stronger players yes. and you play more positionally quiet type chess against lower rated players than you. Yes, because I I assume that if I'm playing somebody who's much lower rated than me, then I don't need to sacrifice pawns or get anything ex extraordinary to beat them. That's an interesting approach. I mean, uh, I don't think I've heard that very often. Yeah, let's uh, so let, let's uh, let's uh, let's assume that you are playing somebody who is like three hundred points below you, and you have a chance to like make a coin toss, to either you win or lose the game. You obviously don't do it. Clearly, clearly, there's some sort sort of poker logic behind this, which yeah, you've yeah, taken but, from, yeah, from yeah, your eight a, years of honestly, being a professional poker player. Yeah, nine, I think. But yeah, 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 I was. But yeah, but yeah, honestly, like uh, when I was doing. Uh, classes for chessable uh, on uh like playing the, on facing higher left higher rated open uh, opponents i had this comparison that imagine that you are going to face uh, one of the best archers in the world in an archery contest and you are an amateur if and if if like it's, if things are going to go the normal way like 99 times out of 100 he's going to beat you but when mm -hmm. they put blindfold on your eyes and his eyes, I think the chance is a little bit higher because he still has, you know, probably this better uh, memory, muscle memory and stuff like this. But when they set your boots on fire and his boots on fire, then your chance increases significantly. And I think this also relates to chess. What yeah, is this move in five? Uh, this That's is asking, asking for this, I think. Yeah. What is this F5 move? Yeah, that's very, very risky. Very well, risky. But on the other hand, I think G5 is also a start of a pretty risky plan. Yeah, this is some yeah. wild. I mean, it's the bishop on, on C8 just keeping the king from walking to safety. Yeah, this that bishop would... also, yeah. That's, but why not that's the put problem. the knight, knight on F6 and try to get the bishop to D7 and cast so long? Yeah, probably. But then, you know, you always have to think about the consequences of something like that. Yeah, Maybe but now I'm happy. I have an open Maybe. file against the king. Yeah, yeah but I'm, it's protected. There's just going to be one rook attacking. And I think with d5, I'm pretty fast here. I like white now. White's yeah. much better here. Like, if you look at this position, it's not clear. But when you make a move d5, I think it's yeah. clear who is attacking. Yeah. Like, you, you still can't move the bishop because the rook is here. The other one can join. Yeah. yeah. And going it's back a, to uh, my going back to my go, thought, I think if you are facing somebody who is much higher rated than you are higher rated, then you should give the conditions where create the conditions on the board where one mistake is going to be extremely costly. Because okay, yeah, I think that the chance that he's going to misplay or blunder in a, in a position that is pretty calm and he knows it are minimal. But when you create something non-standard, magic can happen then.
And there that's why I, I, I use the opposite logic. When I'm higher rated, I don't want to face this kind of situation. And then I'm going to be playing old man, grandpa, low energy, boring chess. Just to score. There you point. have it, folks. Play play old grandpa or grandma chess against lower rated players and play sharp, feisty, dangerous, boots on fire chess against higher rated opponents. I truly believe it. Ask any grandmaster if they are going to be facing somebody who is like 21, 2200 rated in a morning round. The worst case, the worst thing that can happen is the opponent that just wants to check checkmate them from the beginning. And nine out of ten grandmasters are going to confirm it. That it's the worst thing to have. I see Max has a Max A2 has a comment and he's saying that uh, I see what he's saying. Problem is I blunder against all opponents. Look, guys, you can go to Chessable. There's lots of free courses there. And we just released a beautiful course today by, by Grandmaster Josh Friedel called uh, Beginner Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. And it talks exactly about that kind of situation in the opening. So um, maybe there's something for you there. It's worth checking out. But let's get back to the game. It looks like white is crashing through. Um, there is something here, but I don't see it. I have, I only have an evil. I don't have the engine switched on, and I try to find what the move is here. Wait, does, that's there. There has to be something. Maybe it's bishop f4, gf, and queen h4. Is this, yeah, the, yeah okay. this, this has to be the point. Because the this evil, did, the, the evil didn't flinch, so it has to be this. And now, okay, if you go to e8, I take this guy. If you have to play king c7, I assume I take this guy now, or maybe I start with rook e6, because if I take this, maybe there's e5, but then the e, e6 coming. Ah, white has to crash for this. So what's the yeah. life situation? The life situation is that he took here, which seems to be a mistake. Queen c4, mm -hmm. queen f7, okay. With a trap. But Rook e8. You see the check. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We want to check. So king c7. Looks like a blunder for some reason. Maybe bishop a2? Yeah. Yeah. Bishop a2 is a little bit too much. Maybe bishop f4 once again is the idea. Yeah, sharp positions. Sharp positions. Yeah. And black will at some point win this guy. White will play like queen e7, queen d6, I assume, and try to create something. Oh, yeah, but white has a lot more time. That's going to be probably the thing that's going to decide the game here. Because with an additional three minutes, if white just keeps putting pressure on black, it's going to be very hard for black to get out of the situation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but check, check. White is two pieces down. Yeah. Say what? Check should be done. I mean, one piece, I think. It's one piece down. One piece and two pawns. I, I forgot that there's a rook on f1, fortunately. I think this is just a draw now. Because if you play king d8, I have queen e7. And yeah, it looks like this. King c7, queen d6, king d8, queen e7. Uh, the thing is that if you play king b6, you, you just have to get mated. Like, let me show it. Like, if you play king b6, you just go rook b1. And this has to be made. There is not a world where this isn't made. Yeah, I mean, uh, what? Well, maybe if the queen is sacrificed. Yeah, but but then G five, then and it's yeah. maybe because still. If you go to the A file, this just just has to be yeah. be over. Like, assume like this, probably. Does this not one? so easy still, huh? There we go. There we go. <laughs> I I was practicing checkmate patterns, people. That's a good thing to do. Okay, so this looks like it's petering out to a draw. Should we look at another game? Uh, he took. He took. He still wants to win. I mean, having having so, so such a big advantage on the clock, I would still go for it. Now bishop g6. Now I would I would go bishop g6. Like again, like this. Chat's yeah. getting quiet. He played this. Uh, should we switch? Should we switch the game? Like rookie eight? No, is no. Now I want to see how this game ends. It's it's so Queen close. Queen G8 has to be tried. 
I think Looks this like is black is, look like black is running. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So trades everything off. Still yeah. three pieces against the queen. Okay. Gets a free pawn. And, and black should do this now. If to, having 20 seconds, this should be done. Well, black's following your advice. And mm -hmm. white is just picking up more pawns. Yeah. And white should do the, exactly the same thing. Go queen f4, push Gary. Gary is coming. Let's go, Gary. Well, that pawn on a on the A file is moving pretty quick, yeah. Okay. But yeah, He's very nice, pawn. very sharply done. He is giving checks to win time on the clock. Yeah. Now queen a3, and there black should go. go b5, b4 without thinking, like thinking no time for that. G5. Now it's interesting. It's queen not f8, enough time. Queen f8, g6. Yeah, white is going to win this for sure. Like, yeah, there's no white he can do it on time. And it's over. It's like one more move and it's over. There we go. Okay. What's the standing right now? Can we take a yeah, look at let's, the standings? Let's, let's, let's see. Yeah. Bruce Mack, you're asking what opening roulette is. Uh, yes, all the games will be Queen's Gambit. So the people playing in the, in the arena today... Uh, get to play the Queen's Gambit either from the white side or from the black side. Uh, the starting position is d4, d5, c4. And this is a new weekly arena tournament where um, we're going to have an early and a late arena. And all the members of the community get to play. We have prizes available. As you can see there, the Mubot is sharing more information about the tournament. So if you click on that link, you'll find everything you need to know. And... Uh, that's it for now. Let's take a look at this next game. Mm. What, what was the standing, Camille? I missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show it to you like, again. So yeah, the idea of this tournament is basically to allow people to play their favorite opening against others who want to either practice playing against that opening or who also want to play their favorite opening. And so we, we started out with uh, the Queen's Gambit because, well, you know, Queen's Gambit, one of the most classical openings in chess. And uh, we have with us Fide Master Kamil Plichta from Poland, uh, who is an expert in the opening. Uh, he's released multiple opening repertoires on this uh on this opening, and um, um, he has uh, some pretty good results playing this opening as well. And so uh, we felt that it was a really fun uh, thing to uh, ask him to commentate on these community games and uh, get his perspective on these games. It looks like Black is winning this one, doesn't it? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Extra Rook is a pretty, pretty good material advantage. It's, a nice, it's nice to have a, to be a Rook up. Yeah, you just, take you just take the Knight and Rook H2. So what's uh we have a check on the board okay and now checkmate not yet but now there's okay. a check you're just playing p5 and it's made to come and i'm do we basically search for some higher rated people or well let's see what the standings are for a second let's see what the uh what the momentum is like is it, oh somebody's running away with this 10, ten out of 10. Okay. Very so basically score. this for for those of you who don't know this means that he won 10 games in a row and uh, if you have this streak then uh, i think you get more points for a win right definitely looks like uh, smjka russia is running away with the tournament but um we're not even in the second hour yet so we still have a solid hour ahead of us of this arena um so a lot can change especially if people run out of steam so um fear not uh streaks in these kinds of tournaments can suddenly disappear and um there's a couple of uh strong players in position two and three chasing with 29 points each um yeah i'm trying to see what chats up to so we exactly. have an exchange slav the most exciting opening ever. I love it. I I I think that there the only times when I was playing the exchange stuff, let me quickly show it to you, where when I was either playing bishop g5 here, which is very underrated, and it scores heavily for white. Mm -hmm. Like if you even see the score here from the database, it's like bishop g5 is 45% wins for white and 32% draws which transforms into 61% for white. 
And this is a huge number. It's, it's more than a standard white score in any opening. Basically, the idea is to stop black from playing e6 and to discourage knight f6. And there was also time there were also times when I had played exchange stuff just to get only one trap going. There was only one trap which I wanted to execute. So in this position, when a black played knight c6, I played e4. And basically what I wanted to get is I wanted to see takes. I played d5. They played knight e5, obviously, to the center. I gave a check. They blocked with the bishop, obvious. Queen e4, knight g6, and here I played knight b5. And many people played knight f6 here. And that's that's oh. that's the trap that I wanted. Uh, but yeah, since like 2010, I stopped playing hope chess, and and I I started playing normal things. Very nice dirty trap, though. Yeah, I like I like it. I still like it. I won some games with it, so good good memories. There you go. <laughs> Here I would take white. It's like black has bishops, but white has the center. Some chances maybe of creating something on the king side. Uh, I would try to get d5 in as fast as possible with white, because if white does nothing, then black can play like b5, rook e8, get things going. So b5 played d5, nicely done. Bishop c5 from black. Uh, using this newly created square on c5, you go queen g3. And you have to put your queen somewhere, and this looks like the most natural square. At ed5, you just go knight d5. I'm not sure if I like this move. Because now my pawn on e4 yeah. is a little bit unhappy. I have a feeling. I... I, would, I would just go this. Activate your rook. Put your second one on d1. What's wrong yeah. with creating a pass pawn? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, it's also good. Because it cannot be blocked. Like, you can also go right. d6, d7. Yeah, this is also At nice. least if you can get it to the sixth rank and protect it pretty well and maybe finagle something later. Yeah, yeah. This also looks good. I this this I this this I like the 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 least. I think out of all of those three options. Yeah, and I and you know this dynamism. Uh, the first look at this position shows me that like tells me that this is the most dynamic way of playing because you want to double the rooks, and then you want to play h4 h5. Try to break through the king side. There's only one bishop defending the king side. If I get the pawn to h5, I will start threatening. Bishop takes h6. And this looks good for white. And your your suggestion also looks good. Uh, yeah, in the well, game, Casa points out in chat that after after a pawn takes that there's bishop d3. Yes, this is also what what I was thinking about. But still, you I think you can maybe try this. Mm -hmm. Although now it does look less interesting. That bishop looks pretty strong, and but the there, knight there's doesn't. All, yeah. There's also this move, I think. Oh, true. And with the bishop on d3, black also has to be careful. Maybe sometimes there is this idea, not here. Here it's pretty strange. But then, you know, we all love to take on Pesson, but then the bishop is going to be hanging. Yeah. So very, very dynamic type of position. Now bishop d3 played, the knight is hanging. This communication between white pieces is broken. So he sacrifices the exchange. I this love how... Pretty in, interesting in, decision. The knight you're, is you're talking, strong. You're, yeah? you're following the chess, which is what you're supposed to do. I'm I'm reading the chat, and I love how in the chat there's a meta conversation going about what type of opening should be played next uh, after the month of January. We already know what that opening uh, will be, but I'm not sure. I need uh, can uh, can we reveal what next month's opening is, or is, are we kind of keeping that a surprise a little bit still? It's King's Gambit, right? No. Unfortunately. No. Because, you know, when there is Queen's Gambit, then maybe you do Queen King's Gambit. It's kind of related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is an opening for the black side next. But okay. um, I I need confirmation in chat that uh, I can reveal okay. what next I have opening. I have no clue what this opening is. But if I guess, you tell me if it's right. Okay. It's neither. Yes. Here we How go. How did you guess that? How did you guess that on the first try? I don't know. You are just whatever. You have some insider information that I <laughs> I I, I promise I don't. 
It's just Neither this is this is like the, the, the first go. the first opening that came up into into my mind. It's obviously not D four because D four is here, so it's E four. And we do no, some no. Sicilian. What kind of Sicilian you start with? I don't Neither. know. And we we're, and we're we're very likely gonna have a very special guest who really loves the Nidorf and I, plays it religiously. I, and it's can, can and he's I not guess? French. Can I guess? Yeah, you can guess, guess, guess. So the obvious guess would be Anish, but then I think if you are try, trying to tempt me to guess, it's going to be a little bit too easy. Who is there? Is is Maxim? No, no, I already said he's not French. Not French, not French. Okay. So, so I think I think chat's already aware of who we would invite if if we were to ask somebody to go talk about the the Nidorf. But first, we still have another Gambit. hour of this awesome arena happening. We still have next month or next week, sorry, where we're still going to be playing the Queen's Gambit. So we're gonna have a lot of fun with that, and then you know we're gonna switch to uh, setting up. A, a different type of Sicilian on the board. Uh, so yeah, we're going to have this Nidorf month next month, and it's going to be a lot of fun because there's a lot of people who love the Nidorf. Now, what's the, what are the standings now? It looks like uh, uh, SMJK Russia is still running away. But look, uh, the um, the uh, Schneid, Schneid is, uh, is uh, closing in with 37 now and a 10-game streak. So this... Um, this arena is far from over. There's still a lot of chess to be played here. Yeah. Uh, just look at this. The game barely started. It's a rapid game. And white didn't take too much time. Black plays quickly because he just wants to play fast games. He just wants to score his points quickly. But I think that this is a little bit too fast. When you're facing such a strong opponent, you should be careful. Like, there is the Queen's Gambit accepted. Many ways of playing it. You can play e3, e4, knight f3. Queen a4 is inaccurate for a reason that we can see. That's after knight c6. You can't take this pawn. Like, if you do it, there's queen d4 and black is a full pawn up. Mm -hmm. He takes. Knight c2 is a threat. So he defends. He goes c5. Threatening bishop a3. So e3, bishop a3. This has to be taken. If this is taken, there's knight c2 with a fork on the king and on the rook. So ed4, bishop b4, nicely done. You take the second pawn. Black is already two pawns up here. King d3, c5, you play b6. And I think this is already technically winning for black. Like two pawns up should be enough. And you can take the third one on a2, I think. I was going to say, can't you take that pawn, that pawn there too? Yeah. Mm. But now when I think about it, yeah, you probably can, but it complicates the position a little bit. This one on a7 might be yeah. hanging. Right. Yeah. So I think this is better. Bishop d5, rook d7. Uh, rook e7, rook d7. Takes, takes. And the game ended, by the way. King a6, h6. I wanted to commentate a game by Renato, but he's too fast. It's now, you know, when it's like when you're in a supermarket, you're buying groceries, and the lady is doing it like this. You have no time to pack them. And it's like you're you're yeah, losing exactly. with her, right? Like you see you see her and she's she's there. Like I have a feeling she it's like personal for her. Uh, she's like, I'm going to do it so fast that you have absolutely no way to pack this. And I also try to it's not it's like similar. I want to talk about the games, but it's too fast. There is a Schlechter slot now. So I, I is... do it the other way around sometimes. I pack so fast that they can't scan fast enough. And then I'm like, you know, pretending to be impatiently waiting when, when in reality, I'm just trying to get out of there really, really quickly. But uh, but uh, there is a way to to take revenge on the lady who scans the items too fast by, by being even faster. You just have to be really, you have to be, you have to come in prepared. You go stand by the lady. And as soon as she starts scanning, you already have your bag out. You can just start putting the stuff in there. But still, it's like impossible. Like when I buy a pack of eggs, I'm not going to throw them into the bag. Oh, no, no, no. You, you have to have it all planned out. That's why you. Yeah, yeah. So you leave the eggs the... for the last. You leave the eggs exactly, for the last. Exactly. Exactly. You put it all first. On the... That's how you do it. Okay. It's like opening preparation. Yeah. You got to think through the variations here. I never thought about it this way. Maybe we can have some course on that. 
how to how to how to unload and uh, and, and repack your groceries. So first, how to unload them onto the uh, the, the moving uh, roller there, and then and then how to unpack and put them in your your suitcases, whatever your 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 grocery bags. Yes, you should do the course on that because I I have never ever thought about it this way that you explained it to me now. I uh, I think about these things. Because you, you you have been to Poland, you saw all of those Polish happy faces on the streets, like everybody's smiling, right? I think they were just cold. Yeah. And when you are in a supermarket and if you are packing your stuff a little bit too slow, you will see those faces in the queue. Like, man, do it faster, I'm waiting here. I can't comment. I'm not Polish. So as soon as I make any sort of comment that you are like, you're allowed to make these types of comments about your own people, but I, I can't make these types of jokes because then, uh, you know, I'm going to be uh, accused of um, something because that's going to be clipped out of context. And then people okay. are going to say, right. So how, how cool, about so I'm as a Paul, as a Paul, I'm officially gifting you a pass of talking anything you want about Polish people. You're gifting me a stereotype. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> I think I feel like you want to focus on chess for the moment. I, uh, I was trying to bring it back to the chess, but uh, yeah, you're talking let's do it. The, the, the grocery so lady. We have an ex we have a Schlechter Slav. By the way, there is an amazing course on the Schlechter Slav on Chessable by uh, Fidel Master Christoph uh, Kubertik uh, from Germany. Uh, he did a course, big course. Uh, he revitalized the opening. Uh, when I was doing a course after he published his, it was really a nightmare to find something uh, to. Uh, to suggest uh, which would be um, we call which would Kubi. be quite easy for White, yeah. So it was a great job by him. Uh, what what I like about what White did is White took, and in and in general, uh, yeah. I, last time I forgot about it. Uh, in general, you just want to get the exchange slav structure. When uh, when Black's bishop is going to be a little bit misplaced here on g seven. And the game is uh, okay. So I'm probably following uh, Renato. That's that's what ha well, that's what's happening now. So let me stop it and let me close all of the games that uh, that I have opened here because now it's a little bit uh, messing up with uh, with the things. Yeah. So uh, what I want to say is that here you have the exchange slav structure when the bishop is going to go to g7. And uh, it's going to be hitting this pawn on d4. It's supposed to be good for white. But what Christoph uh, found out is that the bishop doesn't have to go to g7 immediately, but you start with knight c6, and after e3, you go knight h5. And this is a little bit annoying, because ideally, I would like to play h3 and have my bishop on h2. Now I have to put it on e5 or g5, but it's a little bit annoying. Then I was like, OK, I'm going to be smarter than that. I'm going to start with h3. Then you play knight h5 well. I put my bishop on h2, I'm happy. Then you go knight e4. What's the problem with knight e4? That in the best case scenario, whenever black plays knight e4, I would like to play rook c1 and meet knight c3 with rook c3. But this allows e5 and bishop b4. Mm. Uh, tactics everywhere. So then I realized that's not that easy. And I, I, I came one step further and I suggested h3 immediately. Because then I want to take, then I want to play bishop f4, and then I want to play rook c1. Hmm. Just, you know, fun fact. These types of, I remember when uh, this type of stuff was frowned upon, these strange h3 pawn moves, uh, you know, in the opening on move five or six or whatever. Um, but yeah, that course by by, by Kubi is, uh, is called the, the hybrid Grunfeld Slav. And it's available yes. both in German and in English. And there's a free course on it as well. And as you can see, uh, after the after the moves d4, d5, c4, you can reach that move order and you can play it. And it, and it's a very cool course. And it, and actually, uh, uh, Kubi has a really good uh, results with this opening. And it's a, a nice system because it's very solid, but it's also dynamic and et cetera. So a, a very, very interesting opening to learn from the black side for sure. And it's a complete repertoire, right? I think it, it covers the... Uh, knight f3 and uh, um, c4 move orders as well. So it's it's more than just a d4, d5. Uh, this I do not know. You say that is probably true. Mm. Here I think we that... We have an interesting yeah. pairing. 
yeah this is uh, this is I, I wanted to show it uh, like if higher rated player is facing a lower rated player uh, knight f6 is a pretty common uh, mistake here because after cd5 you somehow have to recapture how do you do it if you play fake with the queen then you play knight c3 followed by e4 already problems like queen d8 e4 white is already two tempi ahead in development as you can see three units in the game just one unit in the game and white is just going to play like knight f3 bishop c4 e5 castle with good attacking chances like this is very shout very positive ruben shout out to chess ruben for uh rating us thank you thank you and as you can see like one mistake is usually follow, followed up with with another and I'm, I'm not saying that black's position is terrible because now it's not but like this is as passive as you can get you not only have a passive position when the bishop is closed here but there is also this problem that you lost time like white has four units in the game black has two okay queen h6 so he wants to deliver mate on h2 um materially speaking black is doing fine here it's equal material mm. I wonder what's about this position that engine likes so much. Okay, because it's black to move, I thought it's white to move. White to move, I just wanted to play queen a4. Force the knight to back to c6, play like rook c1, rook d1. After e5, mm. there is this threat of bishop takes h3. I wonder if knight f3 is a move now. Take. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean if, you take, if you take, you probably get mated. Yeah. Well, the but, knight could still drop back to g3. But then you are mated on h2, I guess. There's another. Ooh. There are two yeah. problems. Yeah. You probably have to play like bishop b5 and pray. Or some knight f6 and pray. Like m maybe this somehow defends. Like. What? What? But now, but now rook over? Uh, okay, but if I have to do this, then I this I hate my life. That's why after knight f3, I guess king h1. But looks like there is a tactic here. But then the bishop gets sacked on h3. Oh, yeah, then, immediately. then bishop h3. And, yeah. yeah, queen h6. Rook takes yeah, one, takes, rook takes. Yeah, the king escapes to g2. Yeah. Something has to be here. I wonder, like, okay, there are some problems with my. Queen, maybe if I move it to h4, I keep all the threats probably. Okay. This this was the way I think. But he goes bishop h3 immediately, which I think is wrong. Because now I can take and take. Yeah. That's okay. okay. Here, here, but here white blunders. White just wanted to move the king forward to make sure that the king is safe, but this just drops a full piece. And as you can see, 2000 player. Yeah, I was, let me, I was just gonna say, are we? This is one of the biggest rating gaps that we've seen. Yeah, black yeah. is just completely winning now. Looks like a big upset. Like rook d2 now. I think rook g8 just straight up wins. Because where oh, do you go uh, even? Where do you go even? A thousand? Like, is it? A th it's more than a thousand rating points difference. That's a lot. Enough time on the clock to finish this off too. What is your feeder rating, Gerd? Like approximately. Uh, 1600 something. So it's like you beating Nepo, for example. Um, no, it would be like me beating, um, Erwin Lamy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 1100 difference? No, he's 2600 something and I'm 1600, no, no, no. right? So okay. 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 Okay, yeah, I can see I can see your point. Eleven hundred, so maybe we pick it twenty seven hundred. So, okay, so um, black won. Black won the game here. There we go. Big upset. Knight f3, game over. Two might threatened. Best rook one, two, rook three, four, g1 five, six, seven, and eight, knight h2. Nine. Brutiful. Brutiful, yeah. Brutiful. It's both beautiful and brutal. Oh, okay, guys on the chat. Guys on the chat, pick a number. Pick a number. The first person who picks a number, which is like lower than 200. 14. 14. 14. Let's go. Watch. 
Oh, and the game just started. That isn't it beautiful. And this is exactly what I was. Uh, nice numbers on chat, by the way. Uh, when, when I was just discussing that you just should not play Queen A4 here. I mean, I know the urge to get the pawn back, but you are not going to do it. Like maybe this is an indication that if you're playing on lower level, Queen's Gambit accepted is a good way to do. If people make this mistake that, all the time. In fact, I um I've had multiple conversations with multiple coaches Boom. that up up until eighteen hundred to two thousand feet level, one of the best scoring openings in OTB chess is actually the Queen's Gambit accepted because yeah. um the players on the wide side who play the Queen's Gambit actually don't know how to play against the Queen's Gambit accepted because they rarely see it, which is funny because at the grandmaster level, it's like a drawing weapon, right? Like at the yeah. at the highest levels, if you play Queen's Gambit accepted, it's just uh, almost a forced draw at, uh, in, in some lines. And um, I remember... A few years ago, I went to Germany to the German Youth Championships um, because uh, International Master Christoph Selecki was commentating the international or these uh, these this uh, this championship um, for the kids, and he had a student who was playing in the tournament, and she played the Queen's Gambit accepted, and I asked him, I was like, isn't that kind of a boring opening? He's like, no, at this level, it's like one of the best openings you can play because uh, it's really it scores really well. Um, and we have a couple of really interesting courses on this actually in Chessable as well. We have one by Sopico with a really interesting early exchange sacrifice out of the opening where black sacrifices a rook for uh, peace activity and um, uh, not a full rook. You get some compensation, but it, it leads to some really wild, wild positions with black's king in the center and white's king in the center and lots of attacking stuff. So um, uh, and actually, in fact, that was one of the. Um, the free courses that we recommended uh, in the uh, article, which maybe uh, we can uh, share again in the chat or scroll up in chat to the Moobot where you can find uh, the recommendation. But uh, are you showing the variation, uh, Camille? Yeah, I'm just wondering if I remember it. Because at the moment, my brain froze. I think it goes like this. Yep, that's it. Yeah, the main line here. Mm. I'm pretty sure the main line goes f3. Well, in the my old d4 course, I was recommending knight e2. Like uh, black plays e6 here, I think, and it's knight e2. This is pretty good. Like yeah, this is wild stuff, and uh, it, yeah. it leads to some really crazy chests. Uh, um, and this is actually um, uh, this particular line was prepped by uh, Sopico, I think. Yeah, uh, this was like 2020. Yeah. And I think she worked very closely with Anish, who's her husband, um, uh, on this particular line. Maybe because she was in the candidates or something or some other important tournament. I don't remember exactly, but yeah. Yeah, I wanted to sh very quickly show you like three possible traps here in the Queen's Gambit accepted. Like you take on C4, right? Uh, like the first thing that you have seen is that after Queen A4, Knight C6, you actually don't win a pawn because there is this idea that if this is taken, there's Queen D4. That's the first trap. The second one is that if they play e3, which is natural, trying to get the pawn back, you immediately go e5. Mm -hmm. So we just want to, like, if they take, you take, and there is an isolated pawn on d4. Not everybody wants to play this with white. Then you just play, like, knight f6, bishop b4, castle kingside. Natural stuff. The third trap is that after e4, e5, many people make this mistake. Well, my pawn is hanging here. I can't stake because they exchange queens, so I'm going to play d5, which is a terrible move. Because now we can play knight f6, attack this guy here on e4, and after knight c3, you just go b5. This is what I like going from my memory. And as you can see, statistics can you, uh, here, black goes okay, huge from this position. Camille, can you show why a white can't take on b5? Yes. With the course. knight? Of course. If this is taken, then I take this guy. And yeah. well, you can continue, but then I assume that bishop b4 is a problem. Okay. And then what happens? Material is equal. You have to move the king. Like why can we not, oh yeah I see yeah because then the I, I can castle mm -hmm. you can't castle well you and will... here you, it's good to illustrate that uh, the knight on uh, b five can't drop back because um right yeah if but when with the king on e one right the rook yeah. gets uh, yes of so course we need to go back. there we go yeah so here the knight takes pontix and now we win an exchange yeah great position for black. Yeah. Here we can simply castle. If they take this, so you, you say go. thanks. You say thanks. 
So yeah, that's good. It's good for people to know that the Queen's Gambit accepted, especially below two thousand uh, feet air level, is a is a great opening to play, and you can get a lot of wins with it. Um, and it get, doesn't get played enough, so for sure, it's one worth uh, investigating if you uh, are interested in learning a new opening from the black side, and uh, you want to get some interesting games going. So yeah, Renato is playing the Cole system here, Cole Zuckertort system, which is pretty. Uh, rare, I think, but uh, but it's not. It's like white goes pretty slow, but then when things can heat up, it can heat up very. They can heat up very very quickly. Um, I, I love the color Zucker Tort with white. I I I've played that, and in fact, uh, as you know, I'm a big proponent of playing the move one b three in the first move. Uh, and sometimes I I end up in a color Zucker Tort type setup with uh, with all those with the bishop on b two, the bishop on d three, and this kind of an attack and. Um, I like these positions. Um, they're fun to play. Very sharp, often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I you know agree. An, you know who is an absolute expert in the Kola Zukator? Probably, maybe the expert in that opening. Yakov Norovitz. Uh, I would say Yusupov. Yusupov. Okay. Yusupov played this played this opening a ton, and in fact, we're going to have him over in Barcelona in the studio. Um, to film uh, some additional new chessable content. And I'm going to ask him about that because I'm going to ask him uh, why he chose to play that opening so much in his career. He won a lot of nice games with it. Yeah, yeah. Now when, I was, when you said it, I immediately remember that, yeah. Like 20, 30 years ago. He was one of the guys who introduced it to the top level. Yeah, exactly. And I think nowadays, is it Gatikomsky who, 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 who employs it? I think he plays more of the London system nowadays. Yeah, yeah, true, true. I mean, Gata, uh, uh, most people, I mean, maybe people don't know this anymore, but but Gata is responsible for bringing the London system to top level chess first and really employing it in a way. So if you're hating on the London, um, you have Gata Komsky to thank for that. But if you love the London, you have Gata Komsky to thank. You for know, that. I, w the way you said it, it's like uh, when there were classes when, when in my school where we were supposed to go play play soccer uh, and then I didn't behave well and the punishment was for the whole class that we can't play soccer because of him. You did it the same exact way. Guys, there is a London system. We all love the London system. You know who is responsible? This guy. <laughs> London system is a solid opening and uh, it's a tough nut to crack and it's also uh, leads to lots of great attacking positions. So I have absolutely no issues with the London. I actually think it's uh, a great opening for uh, for players uh, to learn how to play. It's not the only opening that they should learn how to play and definitely not an autopilot, but it's going it, to it's going to get a lot of people out of the opening and into an interesting middle game. And uh, I think for a lot of club players, that's a very attractive proposition. So of, why not? You know? Of course. Like nowadays, of, you, can, of course. You, can, you can play anything you want. Whatever suits it's, you, you can play. And don't try to allow anybody tell you that whatever you play is bad. If it's good for you, it's good. And nobody should change it. This game is this are we this game is not this moving. Is, Can we go to some Yeah, else? this is this is the Ragozin. I wanted to show you that uh, I you know I spend a lot of time with engines while while doing courses and doing some research and Ragozin is probably the objectively theoretically best opening after D4 for black. Your your wife is an engine, right? What was that? Your wife. Your wife is an engine. <laughs> yes. Now I'm questioning I'm my life choices. In, I'm just I'm just but, wondering if people in chat are still awake. Nobody's responding. Everybody's asleep. Yeah, but 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 yeah, CD5, ED5, you go here. Uh-huh. And uh, oops, I did it again. So ED5 you go. There's a reason why you need the pawn in D5. You just need to control those squares. By taking with the knight, you don't control those squares. That's why you should take with the pawn. If you take with the pawn, you control this. Control this. This is nice, and this is free to move. Knight d5 is a little bit anti-positional because after bishop d2, white will play e4 and get a big center here. Ah, uh, good. Chat's still alive. I need I need a rowdier chat. I keep looking for more fun comments, but uh, you guys are are just uh, you know, come on, let's fire up the chat a little bit. Let's get a little bit going. This I absolutely love for white. 
It's just you have a position where your opponent has no pieces on the king side. You have all the right to just launch Harry forward. And yeah, Black's position is already close to being lost. And yeah, surprisingly, oh. it ended quickly. Over. Okay. okay, he doesn't even take the exchange. Because he thinks like, yeah, the bishop is stronger. Like compare the quality of those pieces. Which one is better? Like this is nothing here. So. Okay, good to see the chat's awake. What else we have going on here? Ah, pawn takes and then it's checkmate. Game's over. Is this still going on? No. No, no, I was calculating something. Something. Oh, okay. yeah. Never mind. Never mind me. Can we take a look at the standings real quick? Of course. Did anything uh, change? Ren Renato is first. Mr. Yeah. SMJ K Russia is second with 14 out of 14. Like 14 out of 14 is not enough to be first. But you know, that's normal. Wow. In the ar arena tournaments are specific. It's necessary to play well, but it's necessary to play well quickly. It's even more important. Wild to me that that uh how like many games are being played to be honest okay the last number that i got was 64 but unfortunately i can't get there 64 polish guy yes <laughs> what a coincidence <laughs> you open up the fridge there are polish guys there they, we are everywhere and nothing can be done about this Okay, I have this ticked on, so hopefully now I can make moves. Another Queen's Gambit accepted. A knight c3 is yeah, considered people... not to be the most accurate move. We need to do better about promoting your uh, Queen's Gambit uh, course, uh, Camille, because uh, I think we've hyped up the Queen's Gambit accepted enough. But uh, let's uh, let's let's get some hype going for the white side. Okay, here. so first things first, awesome if you want, want hype, let's do it like this. That's a good start. Let's flip the board. Now we okay. look from the white side. Uh, Let's look from the white side. Now, black threatens this and this. Like, he wants to take, eliminate the defender of d4, and after that, the pawn on d4 is dead. White plays the move that sure. looks correct, which is e3. Mm -hmm. I would be tempted, very, very tempted in this position to play d5 immediately. Wait, I, I clicked an explorer. Okay. There you go. Now you're there in. You go. Now I'm in. Uh, the thing is that after you play d5, you want to play e4, and you don't waste time for something like e3. Like this is a move that can be played, but you just want the center. Give give it to me. And look at the look at the score in this. 110 games played, 93% win rate. Yeah, for, for a reason. For a reason, you just take space and you just go for it. E3 is a little bit more passive. It gives Black chance to react, and he did he he does it well. This cannot be taken. If you take with the knight, you lose the queen. If you take with the pawn, you allow the exchange of queens, and then the pawn is lost anyway. Yeah. So he plays d5. I think it's the correct move, but well, it's probably better to play this a move ago than now. So bishop f3, queen f3, knight b4, threatening knight c2. You know what? I would probably ignore this. I would I, I would say I would say, I would say I would say this is good for white. Because then you play like yeah. king e2 and bishop b5. Right. This yeah. looks devastating. I was I was tempted to do the same. So this looks this looks really good. This looks tremendous for for white. It's like you you have to play king e7. Yeah, now we can even play b b3 and the bishop goes to a3 with some stuff. How about this? I wonder. Like, you know, open up the lines for all of your pieces. You clear that square for the knight. You clear the diagonal for the queen. You open up the default for the rook. Like if you take with the pawn, well. I assume this should be good. Engine is laughing at me. That it's not the move. But maybe this first. Yeah. If you take with the queen, however, I just go rook d1. What are you going to do here? Like if you move the queen, I have some rook d7 ideas. This knight is not escaping, really. So it's like black creates a threat, but always try to think, can I create the counter threat? It's like, well, where would you put the king? So, so knight, knight check and then king, where, where does, okay. So you're taking the pawn and then you're putting the king on e2. Okay. That makes sense yeah. because then, mm -hmm. the, then the development is harmonious. Okay, like, I get like it. if we do it like this, this is terrible. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You want it the other way around. Close. It's yeah. key. The key is to have first open yes. up the v the V shop, and second, yeah. I have this check. Without this check, yeah. I cannot spoil Black's coordination. Very nice. But point the one. Okay, how, do, how is this, this game is continuing? Like, this is like a natural move to do. Now the queens are traded, or are they are not? They should be traded, I think. Well, some equality, I think. E4. But now black is, seems pretty nice. Yeah, black's black's position. It's not preferable, but black solved the problems. There could have been yeah. much bigger problems. And this I dislike. Okay, you open up the f-file for the rook, you open up the diagonal for the bishop. It's cannot be a very bad move. But on the other hand, like if this is taken twice, like us in the game, black plays queen b6. This rook probably goes to d8 next. And there are some, now some discoveries against the king, and I think white fails fails to stop it. White played knight d5. Mm. Attacking the queen, so like if you take Black. the bishop now, then knight b6 wins. But exactly this is what happened. After knight d5, black can simply take this. And uh, after this is taken, if you take with the bishop or with the pawn, doesn't matter. Yeah, now the knight there are discoveries. Like the worst yep. case scenario, I just take a rook, because this is a double check. Unfortunately, there's no way to block the double check. You just have to run with the king. Something I learned wow. a lot of years ago. So what do we have here? Uh, what is another number? There was 64, there's 17. We go with 17 now. By the yeah, way, this is definitely, definitely not a Botes Gambit tournament. We wouldn't do that to you guys. We'd feel very, really bad about that. One second. If I click on this, does it mean, okay, I'm watching. The question is if I'm following this player now. Is his game going to pop up automatically? Well, let's see. Alban counter Gambit, this is what I was discussing here. And in this go. position, instead of d4, which is almost exclusively played, you just go knight e7. That's a fun fact. Like, looks, looks like a very stupid thing to do. But the thing is that if this is taken, I'm going to claim that this exchange of queens actually leaves black with better development. Because I have the knight already here. And after, let's say, you play knight f3, I immediately jump knight b4. And you know, this is some threat to deal with. And if you have to play like knight a3, I'm already happy that your knight is misplaced. I will play like knight c6, put my bishop on e6, f5, or g4, depending on circumstances, and castle long. And black is going to have very good development here. You like this kind of stuff. You have a course on the Budapest Gambit. You like this kind of like. Giving up you, on and for a quick piece of activation and lots of tricks and traps. You know, I always like to call myself the sidelines guy uh, because my favorite job in chess is in working on chess openings is to find sidelines that are considered to be unplayable and make them playable. And then beat Mama Jarov with it. For example, yeah. That's, this is that's a true this story. Is, that's this a is true pretty, story. Pretty, yeah. pretty satisfying. Camille beat yeah. Mama Jarov with the with the uh, with the Budapest Gambit. And why did you play the Budapest Gambit against Mama Jarov? Because he's one of the biggest experts in that opening. He loves yeah. that opening. Yeah. And this was also during the times when I was playing Budapest Gambit a lot. Still, I'm testing it from time to time. But it's like yeah, after a few years of playing the Budapest Gambit, uh, you know, uh, Budapest is a pretty. Uh, pretty nice. Thing. Unfortunately, but there is the king's the starting. Yeah, unfortunately, the starting position for this thematic tournament does not allow for the Budapest Gambit unless there's some wacky transposition stuff happening. But uh, tough to imagine. Yeah, that would have been fun. Okay, so hmm. here we we have the Albin. Black is a pawn down, but on the other hand, this guy on d3 is pretty strong, and. Uh, yeah, he goes bishop h3, so he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. I would probably prefer to start with rook a to d8, because now after bishop h3, you have to be, deal with the fact that in some positions, the pawn on d3 might be lost. Like takes, takes, queen d3 has to be calculated. White goes knight d5, so bishop g2, and nicely done. You just uh, eliminate the defender of the king side. Now you win a pawn. And, and now there is a trap. Like, let's say you go king g2. I go knight d5. Okay, if this is taken, there's queen d5. If you play queen d3, however, okay, you, first you have knight f6, but there is knight f4, which is even stronger. Mm -hmm. 
So he correctly takes with the knight. Knight takes e7, king g3, rook a to d8. And I think black has good compensation here. Active pieces, chances to play like queen c6 and create problems on this square on f3. And the, a super annoying pass pawn. The, the pass pawn on d3, yeah. So rook c1, rook c I think it doesn't change much. Uh, d2 is premature, I think. I mean, this might be a good move, but to me, it's a little bit premature. Yeah. But yeah, 94, nicely done. 95, queen d6. Black is playing very well this game. Now there's f3, yeah. And we kick the... Okay. Do we? Whoa. Fireworks, look at that. Crazy the threat things is, happening. is huge. Knight takes e3, and uh, it's a royal fork. How do we defend, actually? Like, do we go here? And the Queen has to go. Okay. Queen takes, queen takes. Yeah, it gets messy. You win a knight back, but uh, you're not off. Yeah, at the end. That's beautiful at the end. White blue played knight g4, which is probably oh, but the now best we move. just have h5 and we renew. But yeah, if h5, I think this works. True. But he found this. Oh, that's beautiful. Takes, queen comes in, boom. What happened? Uh, hopefully, oh. I can sh show it to you. Win d3. Wow. But it looks like white ended up winning in this game. Yeah. So something went wrong. Black this is was a blunder. playing yeah. some fireworks chess and then uh, lost the thread. That's a shame. I assume this is a move. It's not. But there is something else here. Right. It cannot be knight f1, right? It is knight f1. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. And if you take with the queen, I promote. And if you take with the king, and maybe I have this move. Uh, crazy things happening. This is what type of the, the game that you get in the Albin, if you want. Uh, so but uh, actually, actually, how the game ended, he played queen d3, h5, but now two pieces down. Yeah. Now should be easy. But yeah, up to, cert, up to a certain point, he played way stronger than 1300. So it definitely shows that he knows the opening, he knows the plans. On Uprising was doing a good job and then uh, lost the thread a little bit. Strong tactical player. Yes. What's the standing at the moment? Where are we? We've got 25 minutes left in this arena. So it's starting to matter now. And it looks like MIT Terrible or MI... Oh, I get it now. MI Terrible. Yes. No, you're clearly you're not terrible because you're in the number one position. Bruising and since he, actually his name is Terry. Is this, but then is it, is it the Renato Terry or is it Terry Renato? Renato. I don't know. Renato. Renato. He's from, he's from, he's from Peru, right? Peru. So we can Peru. say Renato. Yes. Okay. Uh, what's the next number do we have? There was 40, 64, 70, 91. We cannot do. Uh, okay. Let's, let's, let's uh, roulette, 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 click. Go. Yes. Have another martial defense. Again, another defense where this is, uh, I think it's incorrect. You just take and while black has to lose time. If queen d5, you go knight c3. If knight d5, you start with knight f3 and then you play e4. If you play e4 immediately, to... if you yeah. play e4 immediately, there is this trick that black can try this. This is actually not so bad for black. It's good for white, but it's far from being terrible. But I think maybe uh, they're trying to play the Grunfeld, but they're not getting it. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Wrong move it's order. Yeah. So why do they play d5 in the first move then? Because we force the. That's why. Okay. Where's the game? Where's the game? Okay. Now I. Now I will never be able. Okay. This was this game, right? This stream yes. is called Watch Technical Difficulties with Camille Plichta. Oh, there are always technical difficulties with me and the whole chessable team can agree. Lifetime repertoires, technical difficulties. You know, when I was playing poker, like there were very little things that could tilt me 
but when there was some internal con internet connection, some mouse was not working. Those were one of the most difficult things to do to deal with me because when I was playing badly or when there was some like bad beats or just people were winning kings versus aces or stuff like this. Okay, I agree on that. But when I have like 12 tables opened up and my connection is dead, I feel like it's very un unfair. It happens, man. Life's hard, especially Mouse with bad in Mouses have been broken, and I'm honest with you. Mice. Mice. Mice have been broken. Okay. Mice have been broken. In Poland, we broke my mouses, okay? <laughs> I, I better know what I broke, my friends. <laughs> I'm I'm allowed to correct your English every once in a while because we go way back. And I remember maybe I should tell that story. But when Camille first first uh, uh, shared his uh, debut chessable course with me, it was on the Trumpovsky, uh, one of my favorite openings. And um, um, Camille's English suffered from the very most common um, issue that we see with people who are from um, Slavic or Eastern European countries, which is they don't use articles, which is the words the, uh, etc. So they just say, bishop goes to g5 instead of the bishop goes to g5. And pawn, pawn takes rook, like all these kinds of things. We don't talk like this. No, you do. You speak exactly like that. There's a, there's absolutely, there's that, that is your accent. My and, friend, um, it's, it's incorrect. It's yes, but one take rook. One take rook. And so I said, look, your the theory looks great. Your explanations are good. But um, in order for your courses to be uh, readable for um, Ing, oh, that's nice. Is that, did that, that, did that get played? No, I'm showing okay. people. You talk and I story. show something I yeah. see. Back to, back to my story. But then, and, and so I, I, I calmly and um, in a friendly way explained to Camille that he needs to start using articles so that his um, students can start reading his English. And he worked really hard on this. And these days when Camille Plichta speaks and writes in English, the articles are always there. Spot so on. I, I pride myself on teaching you one small thing in English, which is the use of articles. You know, when I was creating a post on Twitter, or should I say on X, it was like, uh, "There me with the Gerd Devan, there, there, well, there is doing stream with me today. Sometimes I'm using too many of them, but you know, it's not it's easy. It's okay. Uh, it's not easy. It's, it's, not, better... it's unnatural for me, you know. I know, I know, but uh, but you're doing great with the articles these days. You're a, You're an article specialist now. Thank you. Article disconnection. Spaghetti and strawberries expert on chessable. One pizza with articles, please. <laughs> okay, what's going on? Wow, we almost have 500 players. I, I heard uh, quiet whispers that we almost have 500 players in the in the arena. That's awesome. And uh, it has to be our inner voice, right? I think it's because we're talking about articles. People just love grammar and English yeah. and stuff. Exactly. Who's going to be a player of 500, number 500? What happens if we have 500 players? Is there a, a celebration? We should have a celebration. What kind you of celebration, Gerd? If there's 500 people playing, then, then Camille Plechta will do a dance. Not in this life, my friends. If there are things in my life that I really cannot do, it's dance. Okay, chat needs to go and repeat dance, 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 so that we can get Camille to, to do a little little dance. Come on. Never. Do we have There's, five players? There is not enough money in the world that is going to convince oh, me to do this. I'm I'm seeing various suggestions. TikTok dance, exactly. I, me, I can dance, but I already did a dance. If you go and look for our wonderful um Harry Potter video on Chessable's Instagram. You can see me suited up in a knight suit, jumping up and down. Or no, no, I'm in a bishop suit, actually, and I'm dancing. So if you want to see me dance, all you have to do is go to Chessable's Instagram, and you'll see me in a, in a bishop suit uh, dancing away.
501. Okay, we have to dance, Camille. You and I. Yeah, yeah but go. it was when there is going to be 500. Now it's 501. It's too late. It's okay. We can. We, we missed can still this. Play. Unfortunately, we so, missed this. No, no, we have to dance. It's, we we it's can't do this. It's too late. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Come on. It's on really three. too late. Yeah? One, one, two. It's too late. Three. Look at Let's this go. beautiful position, my friend. Look, look what's oh, happening. Come on. You're you're we really sto you're I'm really dancing. stopping you're really stopping people from learning chess. I need a beat to this. I need a beat. I'm not hearing any music. We have 500 people in the arena. Come on, Camille. Let's go. Yes, 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 yes. Let's go. Let's go. Look, it's mate in one. Camille I'm... successfully managed to not get into a dance contest with me, afraid. Yes. I I give up in advance. Never, ever. I will. You know, I watched this. There's a show uh, now on Netflix, new one called The 100 Humans. And the first episode of this uh, this series, um, they uh, they actually did some uh, some research because they like the show is kind of scientific and they're trying to figure out what's happening, um, uh, how people think. And actually, people think that um, when another human being is good at dancing, they yeah. are actually a much more uh, fertile uh, partner. So, so if you get good at dancing, you know, that might help. No. This is on... Maybe no, not in Poland. This is on my no list. Maybe not in Poland. Maybe not in Poland. Uh, might be in Poland, but not with me. Okay, let's I'm, get back to the chess. It looks like Black party is beast. What's going on? Yeah, Black's winning. Yeah. But we've seen this before with uh, Frushina, and she somehow manages to, to squeeze out of this uh, this type of stuff I somehow, like just think flagging. Not here. not here, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, no, there's no time. There's yeah. way too much time on the clock. Okay. Uh, roulette, roulette. Here. Oh, wait. We have seen something similar today, right? Look. Yes, we saw this uh, this particular uh, variation already. Are you just going over old games? No, this is live. Okay, so people like this. Uh, there we go. We saw this already. Uh, that, this is a typical motif in the Cambridge yeah, yeah. Springs. When they take on e4 or c4, remember that your bishop is hanging. That's but Camille, pretty important. Camille, remember... Camille, remember, this is the same, uh, you're watching a game by the same FM, and he played this variation already. So that's yeah, why but, we're seeing it again. This is his opening prep. Yes, but this is a different variation. No. Because now he cannot yeah, recapture okay, But he knows his stuff. Yeah. He, he clearly knows his stuff. Yeah. Look, he sees there his again, chance. same thematic pawn break we saw in the previous game. Yeah, exactly. And this also cr maybe creates the threat of bishop h7 followed by uh rook h3 and queen h5 maybe mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this is working but now when the queen has no way to help with the king right. side the queen may... the queen's right. disconnected from the king side and so okay does it work no i don't think it it works there's probably f6 i guess the king yeah. escapes yeah we need one more attacker in this position But uh, this no. has been played. This has been played. No, yeah. but it doesn't work. Yeah. I, I wonder what, what did he mess up here? Because this has to be correct. E3, this looks good. This looks good. You should probably start with something else. Like maybe play queen c1, try to get rook a3. Well, but what's happening? What's happening in the game right now? Yeah. Yeah, th this was sacrificed. And rook okay. h3. And the black should should find f6 now. Like, it's not very tough move to find because it's like, no. you have to defend the king side somehow. And how, how do you do it? This mate. Yeah, there's only one move. This mate. There's f6 or f5. The only decision. Yeah, f, f6 and feels. Usually you just go f6. f5 is a little bit like. If you have those two to choose from, you probably just go F6. Yes. Less committal. So, yeah, played. Should we stay yeah. with this game? No, let's uh, take a look at another game. I, I don't see this uh, playing out very well for for white. There's nothing more here after Rook G7, G8. It's uh, 
kind of done. Yeah. You're going to give a couple checks. Uh, get the pawn to h6, maybe. So I would still play this. Objectively lost, but... Okay, standings. 20 out of mm. 20. 18 out of 18. Those people are crazy. There might be some uh, grandmasters who find that interesting. No idea who you refer to. No. But okay, but okay. You know, but okay. Some people find that interesting. Um... It's actually quite funny because it's like me, me on the diet. Like today is the last chocolate that I will ever eat. And the next week I eat another one. And then I'm like, today is the last chocolate I will ever eat. Then I complain, how bad is it? How bad? And then the next week I still eat another one. And then you know. You know, I I just finished listening to a three-hour podcast by Huberman on sugar, where he has this Dr. Lustig on the um on the podcast as a uh, as a guest and expert on sugar. I had already made a resolution not to eat any more sugar this year and remove all of the desserts and all these other things from my uh, diet. That episode made it so much more clear for me how bad sugar is. Oof. It's Man, actually I, terrible. I, it was it was shocking. Um, and I'm a huge sucker for cookies and all sorts of sweets. And uh, I've managed now to stay away from any of that stuff um, since uh, January 1st. Pretty happy with that. And I've noticed the difference too. Ooh. What's I going actually on? quit, quit all like all I we were talking about this. I quit all alcohol, sugar, like in October yeah. already. Feeling better. I know I'm not sure if it's international, but in Poland we say white death on sugar. And this is basically it is it is, it is the white death. Okay, yeah. it's ten, mo ten more Lustig. minutes. Ten more minutes. So I think the fight for the first place is over, but those three guys are well, going to be fighting for. Well, if if MI Terrible loses one game and then loses a little bit of momentum and uh, Schnitz, uh, Schnitzel, sorry, what was his name? Schnitz gets back in the game, then um, it's going to be. Uh, Schnitz, uh, yes. It, 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 Did you say yeah. Schnitzel? I I'm sorry I miss miss it was like automatic I see Schnitt and I'm like Schnitzel Schnitt wasn't trying to make fun yeah because really not not long, no longer than a week ago we were discussing whether Schabove and Schnitzel are the same thing they are the exact same thing I, I you know your pass to speak about Polish people and Polish things is now deleted from your account. You've revoked my it's pass? Terminated. Yes, it's, ter it's terminated. Schnitzel. It's terminated at the moment. It's like uh, Pierogi. It's basically, you know. Go on. I'll, no, I'll leave it there. It's Go fine. on. Go on. No. Now I'm curious. Oh, no, no. I, I wanted to say it's like Yosas, but, you know you'd get mad at me the one week ago it's like yes let's go some pierogi like... that, that, then we eat some pierogi and after the meal Gert is like oh, so am I uh, do so I hard. like Camille do I like black I like black but yes. why like two, one, two pawns up better pieces three versus one on the yeah. inside and yeah, this is my this black uh, is my kind of black mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure this one this bigger. this one loses for many reasons and okay this has to be one of them. Like where do you even go? Let's say you go here. Uh, first, I want to mate you. I know you want to. And second, right. even if I don't mate you, then I play rook b two. I take one more play c three and basically game over. You always want to mate me. Yeah, I want to mate everybody. Game over. He won. He won. Renato won another You're a lover, game. not a fighter. Yeah. Good stuff. How many minutes? Why not both? Why not both? Left? Oh, okay. But now uh, Renato... So, okay, so can we assume that he's going to win the tournament? Yes, I think so. 
Okay, so let's maybe Let look find, at... Yeah, take a look at the standings. See if we see any people who we know. Um, it looks like a... Chefro is 19. A really wide... Yeah. It looks like a wide uh, variety of folks in there. That's great that Chefro is there. Not smart chess player from Poland. But... Why are you picking on your people, man? I'm just read. I, you know, I am just reading. What? Let's take a look at names real quick. Do we see what? What's the most fun name? We should really award some something to someone for having the coolest name. I had one of the coolest blitz names on Chesscom, and I closed my account in uh, when I when I tilted. Do you want to know what it was? What it was? It was Conan. The Blitz Stroyer. Come on, that's good. Conan the Blitz Stroyer. That's so good. Maybe we should make a poll on chat whether it was good or not. Yes, it was do pretty that. good. I don't know how to do that. That jokes are that jokes are always high in my heart. So you know. Oh come on, Krishna, be kind. You don't even know who Conan the Destroyer is. You were probably born in like 2010. This movie came out before you were born and before your dad was born. I'm looking at some nicknames, my friend. Gray Mom? What? Oh, Mon. Okay. I see some Dutch names in there. There's some... Yeah, not... Oh, Nakamura Rizzo. Okay. Pillow Stealer. I like that one. Pillow Stealer, 1948. Okay. Jedi, Jedi Goat. One. And he has a Jedi goat in the avatar. Pretty good. Goat Jedi Goat's the pretty avatar. good, but it's not as good as Pillow Stealer. Pillow Stealer is much better. By the way, let's look at the names, but I'm still going to open up some games, so it's just showing. You know, we can assume that there are some people who wants to watch chess. Who wants to watch chess here? And uh, oh. yeah, I'm going to open this one because we were looking at this earlier. And now let me once again go to the standings. Um, hmm. No, no, okay. let's go to the top. Let's let's look at one of the top ten games. Oh, top ten games or people. One of the top 10 games here happening here from one of the people in the top 10. Schnitas. Okay. It's winning Schnittes. with Black. Yes. Okay. Next game. Next game. He has a request for the next game. Uh -huh. Please. Cesar. This is more interesting, I think. Yes. Equal material. Oh, no. It's not equal material. It's a piece up for Black. Uh, yeah. And there's quite a rating. Yeah. This is the same player. That uh that won that game against the two thousand player, the Fest one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. He gets paired with some tough opponents. Yeah. But okay. that's that's also a good thing. It's like you are playing those arena tournaments, your rating is maybe not high, but you have a chance to play against the higher rated players. Then make surprises. Score some nice points, some nice wins, some scalps. Anita, you should look up what the word L U L means in Dutch. L U L? Yeah, but do not share that in chat, please. Just look it up for yourself. Me? Now? No, no, Anita. Anita's okay. in chat and she, okay. she's writing a mega law, but she, she should look up what the word L U L means. Okay. But you know that now I'm also curious. Yeah, no, no nobody should look that up right now. But it, I, it's very distracting. As a Dutch person, we're reading that word. It's, uh, you know, takes you places. I basically Googled it. Yeah. Um, the French fighter. Okay. Hey, we have four minutes left. It looks like uh, Renato Terry is uh, is going to be our winner. GM uh, Cabiano it... Faruana. Okay. Yeah. It's not as fun as Pillow Stealer. Pillow Stealer is by far the best one. Why? I don't know. It's just like it's it's a thing. Like somebody steals your pillow. It's not nice of him. I have my favorite pillow, by the way. I took my favorite pillow on the trip to Berlin where we were. 
They've sorry, Anita. Them. Sorry about that. Just don't write that when I'm doing commentary. It's very distracting. That's true. Uh, Especially since it was Omega. Lul. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no. Ajulain looked it up as well. Oh. You know what you did? What you started? And you yeah, know, I, now I, I have a question. Like, what do I think about such a behavior? Because it's like, I think the guy was like not making moves for a long time, right? Was he? Or, uh, did, or oh, is it some yeah, lag? Yeah, is that's it some because lag you're eating up someone's time. I think I have like four different games opened and it's got a little bit laggy. Okay. Hopefully now it's not going to be a problem. Standings, please show it. Standings. I know three at a yes. time, Twitch culture, etc. But um, sometimes it's hard to read through the meaning of a word within a Twitch context and outside because my first language is Dutch, not Twitch. True. Emoji. That's true. I can confirm Emotes. this. When I was now meeting with Gert and Patrick, they were speaking Dutch all the time and I had absolutely no clue what they're talking about. It's like they could speak all the bad things about me and I didn't even know it. We never said a bad word about you. Hey, we have two minutes left. It looks like Renato's won it and Schnitez is coming in second. Who's Schnitez? Can we look up who Schnitez is? Who Schnitez is? Yeah. Javier Benitez. Javier Benitez from Mexico. Mexico. Nice. And uh, who's our number three player? B draw offered, by the way. De draw declined. Number three player is Cesar, 22, from... Is it Peru? Peru. So it's like... From Peru. Yeah. Renato first, Schnitt is second, and Cesar third. South That's America. Like. South and... I mean, not South America, because Mexico is not South America, but America rocking here. The draw agreed. And they agreed to a draw because it's like less than one minute to the end of the tournament. Well played, everybody. This is great. Our first opening roulette um, arena has come to an end. And uh, we have a clear winner. And also clear number two and three. So that's great. Uh, Congratulations. 20 seconds. 20 seconds maybe. Like if if this game is won in 20 seconds, like to, what do you do here? Doesn't, like you have to win in 20 like seconds. It. You go queen d3 exactly, hoping that he doesn't take. Unfortunately, yeah. he now you resigned and you <laughs> cry. <laughs> yeah. All right. But, but yeah, you have like 10 seconds to the end of the tournament. You exactly do this. Congratulations to the top three. And of course, uh, um, we have uh, weekly prizes and monthly prizes. It's been super fun uh, commentating and uh, chatting with you all here in the opening roulette. And um, we wish you a lot of fun and hopefully more fun in the next opening arena in the opening roulette, uh, the late one later tonight. Um, thank you, Chesscom community. Thank you, all the folks from Chessable. Thank you, especially. Camille Plichta, did Thank I pronounce you. your name correctly? Yes, very nice. You know, I mean, from everybody, not from Poland, who is pronouncing it is, the, yours one is almost spot on. It's the closest. After all of those years, you know? I tried, really, man. I've been I'm practicing. Really happy. I'm really happy, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm, too. you know, people are usually, I mean, not usually, but sometimes saying this, that, yeah, it's been a pleasure. It really was fun. It really was fun. I like talking about chess. And you, you guys have been the best people to talk to. I'm very we, happy uh, to we'll be, be here. Hopefully, well, I maybe, can come back sometime. Yeah, maybe next week, Camille. We don't have a commentator for next week. So if you're not busy, who knows? I'll see. I'll see what I can, what I can do. Actually, Max, you're saying try to pronounce my name. It's not that hard. It's Geert. Geert. That's it. Is see? it good? Perfect. It's Geert? Geert? Perfect. Geert. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's not okay. Geert, because I was actually named after my Frisian grandfather, and in the Frisian language, they do not do H, they do G, so it's Geert. Okay, Geert. So we log yeah. off, and thank everybody for watching, and uh, we hope to see you guys in the next opening roulette. Thank you, see you.